Is Texas Tech transfer Tyler Shuck the new QB1 for the Louisville Cardinals? We'll answer that question on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Well, there he is, my guy Grant Mulligan, State of Louisville football analyst, joining the show for his weekly appearance. Wasn't on last week because of his very bad schedule, but Grant is on now. G Money, what's going on, man? You always want to throw me under the bus. You always want to always want to make it my fault. I was also sick again last week, dude. My schedule was bad, but I I was. Your immune system must be putting up Lamar Jackson Heisman Trophy year numbers right now with all your. antibodies that you built up it is and i never get sick either and i'm not going to take much time to talk about this i'm not going to take any time to talk about this that's enough i never get sick but i've gotten sick twice as you're taking time to talk about it which is which is hey happy portaling day man happy official day open of the undergrad transfer portal there's been a lot of movement there has been one name or a couple names really that uh have been surfacing uh over the past couple days the past week about Quarterback play with the Louisville Cardinals. One was Tyler Van Dyke from Miami. Another one that is currently on a visit now. That is former Oregon and Texas Tech quarterback Tyler Shuck. Uh, We'll talk about uh, trusting the Brahms on this one. We'll talk about the pros and the cons. Uh, Grant, this possible addition. Now, this has been something that has kind of been hinted about from Jawar Jordan's tweet to being um, reunited with a former teammate, which sounds like all signs point to Tyler Shuck. There's a lot of smoke surrounding this possible addition. And I feel like the fan base is really polarizingly different in terms of stances here. Shuck has shown the ability to play well, but injuries have stalled out um, a couple of his seasons. First overall thoughts about Louisville potentially adding Shuck to the roster. First and foremost, in portal season, we cannot assume anything is true until a commitment or a signing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're you're operating under the assumption that a, a commitment is possible. Grant said I should right. have prefaced everything by saying that assuming, but for the sake of hypotheticals, is he or would he be – what would your thoughts be on adding him to the team? He is not my preferred, but a lot of people think this way as well. I turn on the tape and I watch it. And it's, it's a guy who I think is more than less likely an upgrade over Jack Palmer. And to most Cardinal fans, that's not saying a lot. Don't want to throw disrespect on the guy who got us 10 wins, but let's call it what it is. Um, I trust – we're going to get into the trust the Brahms part, but with all the quarterbacks at the market right now, uh, I got to be honest, I'm a tad disappointed. But – but – I trust the process, and I'm willing to to see it out. I've watched the tape. I'm ready to discuss his game. So I wouldn't be too terribly upset. But initial thoughts, right off the grip, I am slightly disappointed. Well, I I think with all the names that are being thrown out there, um, Dylan Gabriel, Cam Ward, uh, so on and so forth, I think a lot of people are wanting Louisville to go, um, you know, hunting for the big fish in the portal. What I don't think people understand is that there is sort of going to be a pecking order of of who goes where. But regardless, I've heard that a lot. And I think that this grant is the time to where we put this. We're going to trust Jeff Brom when it comes to quarterback recruiting to the test here because you're really being forced to buy into the notion that uh, assuming that he is the guy, assuming that he's the guy, you would have to be trusting the Brahms to belief in their um, overall scouting of this guy and the belief that he can stay healthy because there's a lot riding on that health. We'll talk pros and cons in the next segment, but I think that this is really, you know, the epitome of trusting Brom here. It's put to the test right away. He's done more with less with uh, certain other quarterbacks in his coaching career, specifically at Purdue, what he's been able to do with some of the unlikely success stories there, Aiden O'Connell, uh, David Blau, um, you know, some names to talk about there. I feel like Louisville fans, and this isn't sort of any relation to this particular recruitment, 
I feel like Louisville fans need to realize that our scouting as a fan base of quarterbacks really hasn't had the greatest track record because there was a group of fans that wanted T. Webb to start. Really wasn't able to put it together. Losing Chubba Purdy, the sky was falling. I was sad about that one. I, I was lie. too. Look how many places he's been. Uh, same thing with Juwan Pass. Uh, the, you know, there's been multiple players that have, and this is no disrespect to any of those guys. I think this is us saying that, hey, look, the fan base might not necessarily um, have the greatest grip, so I'm going to trust Braum here. I think it is the way to go. But assuming that he is QB1, I think that there still is a very open competition in the spring with guys like Pierce Clarkson and Brady Allen because I think that this is a different recruitment than one of maybe Tyler Van Dyke, who you would assume right away he's going to be starting, no questions asked. I think that there's more of a quarterback conversation in terms of competition if you get a guy like Shuck to commit. To be honest, when you look at the game between the two of them, Tyler Van Dyke and Tyler Shuck, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of things that are, are very similar in their game as well as in their career. I'm not positive that there's a huge stark difference. If I was taking one over the other tomorrow, I would take Van Dyke. But I don't really think that there's a, a significant difference in the level of player that you're getting. I think that it, even if they went and got Van Dyke, that's not a direct guarantee that he's going to be our starting quarterback for next year. It's mm -hmm. likely because you brought in a, a senior quarterback, a quarterback with a lot of experience, uh, a guy who, as we talked about in the show before, has had that draft type. But that possibly could have been one of the factors that, that changed the tides a little bit. I'm not speaking on any form of source or experience, but maybe that's how they want it going in. And, and Chuck, a guy who's got some injury history, I mean, I, I'm just going to – assume that the guy understands the position that he's in right now. I mean, he's mm -hmm. he's got some some Ivy League offers coming out of high school, so he's a smart guy. So he can understand that a guy with his kind of injury history and not proven, guaranteed proven production um, might have to battle a little bit to get the starting job. But he has the talent to do it. Um, like I said, I don't really think there's a ton of talent difference in between van dyke and chuck but we'll have to see we'll have to see how things shake out but all in all you're right i think this could lead to a, a competition scenario that's best case scenario when you go into an off season uh, and add a quarterback that is going to come into the room and compete hopefully that's also you feeling good about the guys that you already have in the room and you getting a guy that you may not need to be the the day one guy you know you want to throw some competition in there of course especially with three quarterbacks leaving the roster already I mean the Brahms are, are used to working with more quarterbacks in the room as it is and we, we had what nine quarterbacks in the room last year yeah well and he, I likes don't think to go with that. he likes to go with that as well I don't mean to cut you off I do want to ask you one question before we get in the next segment um do you think that it's a one quarterback edition type portal season or do you think that they go with multiple because they lost three I know they bring Deuce Adams in uh, maybe the the Bailey edition with the walk on was a special scenario. Do you think that this is a one quarterback off season for Louisville? I would, given it's gonna it's gonna depend on how the rest of the portal shakes out. I yeah. would say right now, yes. However, I'd agree. I don't think that we're gonna go fishing for two starter level guys. If that makes sense, uh, yeah. I think that Chuck. I don't think we're gonna go fishing bigger than Chuck. That's just my gut feeling right now. It could be that maybe the staff is pursuing both Van Dyke and Chuck with the idea that they'll battle it out once they get there. It's portal season; anything can happen. I'm not speaking with any kind of source when it comes to that, and 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 that's what that's not a right. That's that's not what's happening. Yeah, it's just it's just intuition at that point. But that's so. my intuition tells me no. Uh, I think Chuck yeah. would be well. As of right now, Shuck would be the only starter level quarterback that we have coming in this year, uh, and then maybe there's a another guy who maybe has some familiarity with Brom, or they recruited him somewhere along the process who sure. they'd like to bring in in a reserve role. Maybe another walk on guy, I like the Harrison Bailey situation. Uh, I just don't see it. Uh, what I could see while we're getting on that, I could see two quarterbacks in the twenty five class. Or the yeah, I mean, and yeah, I could see that. We've that, already got Mason yeah. Mims in twenty five. Uh, I do. 
Yeah, I do agree that I think next year's class, you maybe take two guys. Yeah. Put it this way, though. I think that, uh, you know, as much concern as there may be, and we'll talk about that in the final segment, I do, after some research, I think that there is a, a good amount to like uh, about a possible addition. Uh, it raises the ceiling of this offense. So we're going to talk about that um, here momentarily after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn has the tool to help the right professionals or help find the right professionals for your team. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 20 Four hours. That's huge. LinkedIn knows the challenges that small business has faced. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Grant, I think that there's a good amount to like about Tyler Shuck's game. Obviously, he's had the injuries, but when he's been on the field, he's performed pretty well. I think that he comes from um, a familiarity with an offense that likes to throw the ball downfield. I think that that's something that the Cardinals offense was missing this past year. Solid velocity on his throw, a ton of zip on his passes. When you look at the sheer talent, I mean, it's there. The tools are there. And obviously the kicker is the health, But and you're gambling on that. But I will say that the tools are there. And I think that from a talent perspective, you would be getting an upgrade at the quarterback position. I would say that you're right, just purely off of what he brings to the game. One thing that uh, he definitely brings over Plummer is mobility. Uh, he, he's a guy who has some legitimate dual threat ability. He showed it both in high school and at Oregon and Texas Tech. Is that he he can legitimately run. He isn't just a guy who'll catch you off guard and rip off ten yards because you weren't expecting him to run. He'll rip off ten yards because he's an actually like talented runner. And I think that that's going to really help uh, add some dynamic to the run game. I know that that really isn't the style of quarterback that the the Brahms use, and it's not a heavily used element in their offense. But having a guy who can you know get out and extend plays. Uh, and, and make some plays on the run, even grab you a first down with when the pressure comes in, is never something that I'm going to be upset about. But uh, as far as the rest of it goes, he checks the rest of the Brom boxes. He's 6'5", right. he's good weight, um, he's got better arm strength. Uh, I really like – one of the things, one of the biggest critiques I had about Plummer, both whenever we critiqued him coming in when he came mm-hmm. from Cal and Purdue – was that it just didn't seem like the passes had a lot of heat on them. This is not the case. Um, Guy's got a cannon. Let's just call it how it is. He does have a cannon. Uh, One thing that I want to see out of him is he's never really had a touchdown to interception ratio that one would consider, like, admirable. Uh, I would like to see more, either more touchdowns or fewer picks. He's never thrown, like, a ton of picks when you look at it throughout a season but when you count for the games that he's played i mean mean, he's he's played what 15 games in the past three years or something statistically speaking so like i said the elephant in the room it's health right um although i found it interesting i looked to see who all was also reaching out to shuck and it's not a terrible list I mean, you have Central Florida where he just visited. North Carolina was interested before they got someone out of the portal. Um, I believe Arizona State was also a team that had reached out or was um, targeting uh, Shuck. There's a couple different schools that reached out to Shuck. And, And truthfully speaking, I think if the injuries weren't an issue here, I think that the the law or the the line would be longer, I should say. I completely just tripped up on that. So does it make it any – now, injuries are injuries, but I do wonder here, you look at the injuries themselves, and they're not like lingering issues. Now, granted, I've never heard of someone breaking their collarbone, not once, but twice. Bruh. That is wild. And then after that, Bruh. he broke his fibula. Three straight season-ending issues. For me, that spells more like absolutely horrific injury luck rather than the lingering issues. Now, granted, they are injuries, but does that take away any of maybe the 
concern even in the slightest that they're not like a, it's not like a torn ACL or a rotator cuff issue to where it's like a tendon issue. It's just completely um, off the wall. Horrific. Honestly, as it, strange as it sounds and you're alluding to it already, it's better than tendon and ligament issues. Oh, 100%. Those are much, much easier to re-injure than a broken bone. Obviously, it's not great, and the fact that it's happened multiple times, you want to call it a freak thing, but when it happens three times, there's got to – I don't know. You can't wipe it away completely. We can't just chalk it yeah, all. Yeah, I know you can't uh, do that. But – you're right. If it was a ligament thing, if it's multiple torn ACLs, you really get concerned because that the, a re-tear is super likely at that point um, just because those ligament injuries, those soft tissue ish injuries are really lingering and, and can happen. Uh, they also often take away a lot of your explosiveness. You, you lose elements of your game. Um, but for an injury that essentially has the ability to fully heal – it shouldn't take too much off his game, and it, it does give you pause for a moment. Like, well, maybe this this isn't the same thing as torn Achilles, torn ACL, torn like rotator cuff. I would rather see this than muscular injuries, than soft t- tissue injuries. Yeah. I still don't want to see it, because mostly because yeah, I want to see a bigger body of work. Mm-hmm. That that That's my biggest thing, I guess, is that I feel like this really inhibits us from – seeing him across because we've never seen him for a full season we've never seen an entire body of work from him and that is something that i guess makes me a little more skeptical about him as a player is because we've seen him spot start well obviously he's earned the starting role going in to the season every year at texas tech right. which speaks to itself but yeah. i i would have liked to have seen an entire season's worth of body of work rather than pieces here and there and having to fill in the blanks. I think that one aspect of this that I really would welcome would be his involvement in the running game, especially RPO sets. Um, When I watch his game, I look at a guy who is absolutely fearless in absolutely throwing that ball down the field. And I think that that's something that could really help this offense is taking the top off a defense was something that we really didn't have this season. So that aspect of it, I feel like, would be something that is welcomed. But one, I I talked to a couple of Texas Tech fans uh, that I've met from across the years, and all of them said the same thing, is that he can be erratic with throwing the ball, but one thing is is pretty much universally accepted, and that is his role in the running game and how well he completely catches defenses off guard, keeps them honest, and if – you know, that fibula injury hasn't hindered his ability to run. I like that moving forward for him. Um, but I now want to flip the script, and there are some concerns surrounding Shuck. We'll talk injuries. We'll talk other things here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Weather's gotten colder. I hate it. But one thing I don't hate is the NFL offers staying hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. Grant, I really don't have to spell it out for you. The best ability in sports is availability. And it doesn't matter. We can talk upgrades all day long. We can talk about more arm strength. We can talk about better downfield accuracy. But it will all be a moot point if Shuck still has to deal with injuries in 2024. Whether or not you believe that Brom believes that Clarkson or Allen are ready to potentially step into that role. I still am a little uneasy about basing a lot of this upcoming season to where you have playoff aspirations on a guy's health from a guy who hasn't been able to stay healthy for the past three seasons. Yeah, and and we saw how much quarterback play made or break made us or broke us this season. Uh, with with the up and downs of Plummer. The truth of the matter is that we won 10 games, but when we needed him to be more than a game manager, obviously things kind of fell apart there. Right. And I think that 
the way that the Brahms want to run this offense is that the quarterback has to be more than a game changer. This is a quarterback centric offense, a pro style offense where you're, you're the guy of the offense. And they did a really great job in supplementing that with the run game for this year. But I have a really hard time seeing that this is the long-term vision for what the Brahms want the quarterback position to be uh, within this offense. And I do think that right now, just on paper shot gives them a better chance to run that ideal offense. Now, whether or not Clarkson or Brady Allen are ready to step in or even Harrison Bailey ready to step in should another injury occur uh, is, is going to be a big topic of discussion for this offseason. And, and it's going to be, I'm sure the Brahms are thinking about it as well, trying to get ready not only for this season, but who's going to be ready to take over for the foreseeable future. Because like I said, they're not, as far as I know, they're not going to be looking for another game manager guy to be their long-term answer. They're going to want a guy who can run this offense, be the general, uh, and make plays and and really be the star. Yeah, I, I mean, I felt like the whole plan all along was to go get another stopgap in 2024. Um, I, I, I truly did. Um, and it, from what I've heard, now granted, do not take this as gospel and run with this. Hey, look, Dalton Penn said this. Don't do that. I feel like I've heard that Clarkson and Allen know this to have been the case, that they're not caught off guard. So I think you're right. Hopefully that is the case. But outside of injuries, and we talked about injuries, 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 what else might be concerning about adding a guy like Tyler Shuck to be QB1 for the Cardinals next year? Again, lack of, of proven success. But the truth of the matter is that guys with proven success – are really hard to come by in the portal. I mean, there's there's guys who put up a lot of production, but they don't maybe it didn't show up in the win column. There's Mm -hmm. guys who win a lot, but then they're getting coveted by Alabama and Georgia's and Oregon, like the big bigger dogs than us as of right now. That's just what it is. As great as a season as we have and a great of a coaching staff as we have, like you said earlier in the pod, there's a pecking order to this. And right now we're just not in a position to get like guys like Dylan Gabriel. There are so few guys who have that kind of proven success or have that kind of pedigree. Dude, how long has he been in college, bro? This is like year seven. I think, I think he's going into year seven. My goodness. I mean, uh, then again, I mean, that that's kind of the name of the game at the moment, but yeah, just because, Size is a limiting factor for him to go to the next level. Injury history mm-hmm. is for him to go to the next level. He'll make more in NIL here. I get it. But, like, every year there's so few of that kind of guy to actually hit the portal. Mm-hmm. So you have to take a flyer on a guy who could be a really productive, really solid starter just because getting a whole package as a transfer quarterback is just a dart throw unless you're a big dog. And even if you're a big dog – and you get a guy like Dylan Gabriel, there's no guarantee that he works in your offense either. It's it's just really difficult. It's it's a really difficult position to be in in the transfer quarterback market because ideally you want to be able to grow your quarterback organically, uh, which I think is obviously the long-term vision uh, for the Brahms. I don't think that they're going to spend every offseason being quarterback portal shoppers uh, like they do uh, down the road in the other city in Kentucky. Um but I just – I think that that he could be a stop. I think we can win or do more offensively with a guy like that, but I don't see it going much further than this. I think that with the young guys that we've recruited out of high school, both currently and who yeah. we're, we're looking at for 25 mm-hmm. and, and obviously the addition of Deuce Adams as well, uh, I think the answer is going to lie on the roster going forward. I felt like – I mean, I agree. I felt like the plan was grad transfer 23 or maybe two-year guy in 23, but 24, it's a guy with one year left because 25, it's going to be a three-headed monster at, at competition between Pierce, between Brady Allen, and between Deuce Adams. Now, if for some reason Brom goes back to the portal in 25 – well, I think that that tells you all you need to know about the the state of the quarterback room, but that is over a year away. So we're not going to talk about that yet, but I think at this point in time, for the sake of hypotheticals, for the sake of discussion, 
it, it's going to be a situation to where, um, you know, this is going to be a one year thing and people talking about, oh, what's going to run Clarkson and Allen off at this point. Here's the thing about it is I want you all to understand that if this gets to 2025, Clarkson and Allen are both on this roster. The person who doesn't win that job is going to leave. I'll guarantee it. Certainly. I'll guarantee it almost because they'll have sat another year. Um, at that point, Clarkson could transfer and have his one-time transfer. Brady Allen would be a grad transfer. <laughs> Likely at that point, if Clarkson's not starting year three, he's probably gone. If Brady Allen's not starting for his year three in the Cardinals program, he's probably gone. That's something that you just have to understand is that we talk about Clarkson and Allen, Clarkson and Allen. Truthfully, it's going to be one of those situations to where unless we run where one guy gets one half and the other guy gets the other half, it's That's going to how, be – Hey, Pierce is used to that. That's how they played at the Bosco. Yeah, that is that is pretty – Well, for one of, one of his years. Yeah, well, that only happens at one place. But um, you see what I'm saying here is that let's worry about the future in the future unless we have to worry about it now. The truth of the matter is you're going to go to the portal now. So um, we'll see. Shuck is on his visit on Monday, and uh, we'll see if anything comes from it um, here in the next couple of days. But that's going to wrap up this quarterback episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. Everyone have a great day. Grant Mulligan back on for another episode tomorrow, so be sure to stay tuned.